Right, okay, let's start this all off with a happy new year to everybody. And thank you for joining The Average Golfer for what is gonna be a full-on week of tailor-made testing. And we're gonna start with the M5 driver. We will stick a shaft on it, don't worry, but there's been lots of hype already around this uh, club. All we've managed to see so far is a little brief snippet of that club face and these two red screws. We're gonna find out exactly what they are supposed to do in helping this perform well in the hands of people like you and I. So it is all about speed, it's all about ball speed across the whole of that club face, maximizing that and getting it as close to as they possibly can to the legal limits in terms of COR. So what they have done is this, these two holes are filled with a resin individually filled with the resin. Every club head is tested across a number of parts on this club face to make sure we are maximizing ball speeds across that club face and the resin is injected to assist that process. We're then looking at this underneath the club, you'll see the T-bar track system that's been introduced. So there's plenty of adjustability. Two 10 gram weights allow you, like I said, plenty of movement within this club and optimize the ability to custom fit for you as an individual. Now, once again, we see twist face technology is gonna continue into the M5 and M6 drivers and into quite a few more products of TaylorMade as well. So they certainly believe that this has been performing well, this concept they introduced last year about uh, reducing spin in areas of the club face, so low heel, high toe. And again, plenty of videos out there from last year explaining exactly what twist face technology does. But it basically allows us, in theory, to get better dispersion with off-center hits. We're then looking at this introduction of the resin into this um, into the face, this speed injection, as they're calling it, and surely we're gonna produce a pretty impressive driver. In terms of looks, here's some images thrown up on screen now. I wanna stay out of the looks uh, opinion, to be quite honest with you. I think that's very much down to the individual, so I'll leave that one to you. Maybe we'll talk about uh, this a little bit more when I sit it behind the ball very, very shortly, which is what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna take this first of all out into four golf Chester. We're gonna do some testing. I'm gonna give you some immediate feedback. We'll get some dry ball data and then we'll get out on the course. But first of all, let's get over to four golf Chester and start hitting some golf balls with this M5 driver. Right, so you've heard what Taylor made. I've got to say, you've seen all the glossy pictures. You know what this thing looks like now. It's into four golf Chester. For some dry ball data that I will collect later, but for now, I'm gonna talk about how this club sits behind a golf ball, hit some golf balls, and I'll give you some immediate feedback for getting dry ball data, not having the knowledge of the dry ball data. Let's talk about what I'm seeing immediately from the performance of this golf club. Let's talk at address first of all. I love this carbon crown. I love it in this matte muted finish as well. They've also gone back to thinning this top line. You had a white and silver band in the M1 through to M4 series of drivers, which is sort of three quarters of an inch thick. I like that to be fair, they don't have a problem with it. However, they've said that, they've thinned it down considerably. It's a silver band, it's still there, and it looks good. I really like the finish on this. It's definitely got this sort of motorsport Formula One theme running through this whole look of this. Um, one thing, I really do like is in the grooves here they've put a circular colouring, white colouring, little cutaway in each of the grooves which highlights exactly where the centre of this club face is and it's really handy at address. I really like that touch that they've added. Um, this is set up at 9 degrees, I've got the weight pushed quite a bit uh, far back in this and we'll look at this uh, T-bar in closer uh, a closer look at it in a later video but for the time being that's how it's set up and I'm using this um, tensite red shaft in stiff right or orange shaft i think it is actually let's hit some golf balls and give you some feedback oh that has absolutely flown that's not the feedback i was looking for i was i was, I was going to be a little bit more um a little bit more subdued but that's uh, a bit of a, a bit of a ball to start proceedings off so uh yeah, first impressions. Let's hit a few more balls before we draw any conclusions because uh, that one absolutely rocketed. Now that's a ball that come right out of the toe. It'd be interesting to see, I would love to know if there's a way of measuring the impact 
of twist face technology because if there's ever a shot that required some assistance from twist face it was that because we've not got this uh we've not got this club marked up taped up as such to see where that come out of but i can tell you from feel yeah it come high high toe and uh, it did okay to be fair what would it have done without twist face all you cynics out there i know your answer that's a golf ball absolutely flown right let's stop it there two balls in um one ball like i said high toe would have made uh, light rough i think but it certainly wouldn't have found the fairway the other two balls first ball was an absolute bullet first things to note are um difference in sound and feel in this uh, m5 driver from previous models of taylor made it is a more muted sound i think it's a softer sound i again prefer the feel feel doesn't mean to say you're going to get better performance but it certainly might persuade you into why you might buy one driver to another and for me the sound that's coming off that which resonates in feel is a good one looking at the first uh, the two out of those three drives it's gone it's flown we're expecting it to um but ultimately dry ball data will tell us exactly how it is doing in performance and i will do that a bit later on but for now that's my opinions in here we need to get out there on the fairways and try this here's a few balls off the tee so that's exactly where we're going now So finishing up some feedback straight off the course from the M5 driver. Uh, once again, sits really nice behind the ball. Plenty of confidence to address. I love the way it frames the ball. For me, I could probably maybe tweak it a little bit in terms of a lot of the shots that I'm hitting are slightly down the right hand side, which is perhaps a good thing for me because uh, I'm, I'm struggling to move that ball to the left at all. Uh, but like I said, that's a, I'd say that's pretty much a positive based on the way I uh, swing the club. Um, but yeah, maybe that adjustability, I can just make a little change in the weight down there. Um, but overall, the ball seems to be coming off fast. I'm in it pretty much out the middle, so I'm not exactly testing twist face right now, um, which is unfortunate. But reporting on what I've seen out there on the course, this ball travels, um, great feel, great sound. Once again, very difficult to be critical uh, with this club out on the golf course. Any errors, well, they're down to the swing, I'm afraid. Right, okay, so that's pretty much all we can do in far, as far as the testing this far in anyway. And I'm going to, and I say this far in is because I'm going to spend a lot more time with this driver and others in the weeks ahead to spend more time looking at data in particular, trying to analyse the impacts of twist face if we can ever do that. Um, but it is a very small uh, amount of data that I've collated so far with this club, but I took it out on the course. We've had it down at Four Golf Chester, and here is my evaluation of it. Um, I'll give my opinion on the looks. I love it from the top side. I love the crown. I love that matte finish. Great looks. From the underneath, a very, very personal thing. I'm not a fan of adjustable drivers in the sense of all the nuts and bolts that are on the bottom. They don't ever look right on a driver to me. It's far too mechanical looking. So that's something that's very, very these are never going to appeal to me, adjustable drivers. And once again, I think it's pretty pretty ugly from the bottom end to be fair um, and not something from sitting on the shelf I would be gravitated towards but that is again uh, nature of the beast if you want that adjustability then you've got to have these nuts and bolts and these uh, elements uh, of screws to be able to move this weighting system around that would be an interesting point for me is how much difference could be made by moving these weights around there are so many different permutations in the time scale that I've had I've probably not been able to optimize this club in terms of settings um, for me and I think that's down to the limitations like I said in time we've had since I've had the club and the embargo date um, I will be looking to make further videos on this trying to have a closer look 
at adjustability and what impacts it has on this club because if you look at the dry ball data I obtained it's a small sample uh, shot of data um, carry distance 243 on average uh, launching very very high for the um, uh, amount of loft that I had on this club up at what is it 16 16.7 average uh, in terms of pretty constant very high ball flight incredibly low spinning considering the high launch um, combination not far off being good if you get probably um, I would have thought want well, to lower that launch down a little bit bit higher spin and I think in the adjustability elements of this club you'd probably be able to do that it's off the feeling uh, definitely there's no doubt about it it's a different sound a sound that I prefer in terms of performance how do we measure it well that's a difficult one for me how do you how do you gauge on the small sample testing that I've been able to do and don't forget this is on the course and dry ball data how do you gauge things like twist face how do you look how do you look and see if these the um, that the resin that's been impacted on this uh, face has it has it produced faster ball speeds across the face I think we need a lot more testing in the weeks ahead to try and find out if we can identify have Taylor made uh, managed to achieve that uh, but I can't back up that from the small testing that I've done all I can say it's a very very good driver the M3 and M4 in last year's top five for me were well up there I think I had them at number two and three they were very very good drivers so for me it's still a very very good driver how much has it come on from M3 and M4 for me at this stage hard to tell the only thing I can say is in terms of sound and feel there is a difference in terms of overall performance I can't really see a great deal of difference at this stage but I will promise you I'll do some more testing on this and we'll try and establish more of those facts I think by spending more time hitting a larger quantity of shots I'll get these out to uh, the rest of the Taggers team as well and we'll get a few different handicaps hitting this club in the weeks ahead so for now that is my first look at least at the Taylor M5 driver I've got plenty of these to come so stay tuned thanks for watching this one comments down below and I'll speak to you soon